Welcome everyone to the first of two virtual Taste of Fala open enrollment events. Um, my name is Eli Cohn. I'm the executive director here at Fala, and I will sort of be your host and MC this evening. Um, so I just want to welcome you all here. We have a fairly packed hour, hour and a, we kind of timed an hour and a bit for you. We have some performances. We have lots of discussion on what we offer and what we do and who we are. And you'll get to meet a lot of people who, should you choose to come to follow, you will get, well, get to see in some form fairly regularly. Um, but hopefully on our beautiful canvas, which you will get to see a little bit of a tour of in one of the videos. So thank you all very much for coming. And I believe now I am going to turn it over to Kim Katibi, who is our was I right? Did I do it? I have to look at the list. I'm, not, I'm trying to do it without the list. Anyways, uh, Kim Katibi, who is our special ed director, who will give you a little bit of an overview of Fala, and then we will go on. So take it away. Hi, my name is Kim Katibi, and like Eli mentioned, I'm the special education director here at Fala. I'm excited to share with you a little bit about the history of Fala and our key guiding practices and principles. Fala was established in 1996 as a high school and added seventh and eighth grade, excuse me, seventh and eighth grade in 2010 and sixth grade in 2019. In 1995, Karen Butterfield, who was Fala's founder, was an art educator here in Flagstaff and served as the art district coordinator for FUSD. At that time in the landscape, the educational landscape of Flagstaff, Staff, arts and music and theater programs were being cut from the district schools. So Dr. Butterfield began the journey of creating a school where these programs were not only elevated, but integrated into rigorous academics and service learning. In 1996, Fala opened its doors with a shared partnership with the Museum of Northern Arizona and the rest is history. At Follow, there are a lot of things that make us stand out, and one of the main ones is that we strive to create an educational environment that balances the academics with the arts. Students become a part of a dynamic learning community that celebrates creativity through rigorous academic and artistic programs. We have some of the most talented teachers and students, and we believe that by having an education that is grounded in leadership in the arts, our students are able to be curious, creative, and thrive. As you can see from the slide here, our guiding principles and purpose are centered around creating an educational experience for our students that focuses on fine arts and performing arts, leadership, civic engagement, experiential learning, and community service. As part of our educational practice at Follow, we believe in the values of the habits of heart, mind, and hands. These include common good, connection and collaboration, investment, creativity, and critical inquiry. All of these combine to create a dynamic educational environment where we invest in creating opportunities that value our individual students and help them foster their love of learning and creative passions. We work hard to support our students in creating a space where their voices are valued and they have the opportunity to contribute to our FALA community and greater community. Thank you again for joining us tonight. And now I'm gonna hand it over to one of our amazing parents extraordinaire, a former board member and a marketing professional, Ms. Heather Pierce. Okay, hi everybody. Um, my name is Heather Pierce. Um, I am a current follow parent, um, also a, a former board member for three years. And I also um, chair the marketing and communications committee for or Fala. So um, thanks for everyone um, who's here today. I'm going to just run through a couple of things, including the Fala mission. Um, and that will really give you a nice idea of really what um, Fala is all about and kind of embodies the, uh, the spirit of the school. And then we're going to talk about a couple of really cool stats too. Um, so Flystaff Arts and Leadership Academy celebrates individual creativity through rigorous academic and artistic programs, which gives students the tools and confidence to construct their own success by making learning revolving through the integration of disciplines, concepts, and methodologies, by developing critical thinking, problem solving skills, and technical skills through the integration and synthesis of ideas. Also by providing opportunities for the cultivation of the student as a whole being 
emphasizing and modeling a love of learning, valuing leadership and interpersonal skills through experiential learning and service to others. Also, developing an appreciation of the arts in the lives of students, and finally, and least, last but not least, strengthening, le strengthening learning and a sense of community through the development of partnerships. That was a mouthful, but all very true. <laughs> um, we can switch to the next slide, Rick. Um, so I'm just going to run through a couple of um, uh, statistics about FALA that I think um, make us um, especially unique and impressive. Uh, currently, we have a 300 um, student body size. That number does fluctuate upwards um, on, in campus year, on campus years. Um, we see about 25 students per teacher um, on average. Some classes are smaller, particularly when you get up in those kind of higher, um, the performing arts classes, um, higher up in the uh, high school levels. We have a 97% graduation rate. I think we've like nearly had a hundred percent graduation rate, but somebody, for some reason, something skewed it. So it's still pretty awesome. 97 is, uh, is quite a feat. 64% uh, of students received a three or better on their AP exams. That's incredible. We got some smart kids. $500,000 in scholarships have been acquired by FALA students. Many of our students go on to college. 15,000 service hours contributed by the senior class. We'll, you'll hear a lot about um, service um, tonight during the presentation. Um, you heard that in the, uh, in the mission statement. That's a big part of who FALA is. And that is one thing that makes us especially unique here in the Flagstaff community. Those are all of our FALA stats. And I think um, now that you have all of this wonderful information, we're going to um, present to you this really great video. It's about 12 minutes long, so get a drink <laughs> or a snack um, and get comfortable. Um, this video really um, is a wonderful um, video that showcases um, all of what FALA does. Um, we've got a number of, uh, of our wonderful educators that are speaking and, um, and also a little bit of a campus tour. So, and a, and a number of other um, interesting stats that will be thrown in throughout. So Rick, you can get that, that video started. Flagstaff Arts and Leadership Academy is responding to the needs of Flagstaff students and their families during unprecedented times in many creative ways. But even during normal times, FALA provides a transformative educational experience by supporting students. This year is very different from other years, but nevertheless, we have to move forward. And how have I changed in a way to address the needs of students? Just being more intentional about my outreach, doing surveys to see what the needs of students are, and creating programs and supports in place to help students succeed. Yes, it's different, but students are still rocking it. Students are still doing okay, and we're ultimately here for all of them. Hi everyone, my name is Christina Wolf. I'm one of the Fala Middle School Intervention Teachers, and one thing I've really been thinking about in this last year with all of the changes as a result of COVID is how I connect with my students. Um, and that has uh, changed the way I deliver instruction, trying to find more engaging activities, and also the way I'm communicating with my students. Um, I've broadened my scope of communication to include, well, just about every form I can to be able to reach and uh, connect with um, the students that I support, uh, including email, text message, um, video chats, all kinds of stuff, um, breakout rooms. Uh, it's been powerful. Um, one thing that I think is really unique about what we do at FALA is we challenge our students to think and think differently, think critically, think about how to solve problems. And that's a skill that will take them into their adult lives uh, and help them be really successful as being able to identify problems and figure out productive solutions and feel empowered to take that on themselves. Fall is an amazing place full of creativity, acceptance, and love, and it's amazing to be a part of it. Hi, my name is Michael Levin. I am a theater and creative writing educator at Fala. 
where I've been since 1997. It has been an incredible journey, a dream job, where I get to work with colleagues and students that are my heroes. Every day is as great as the last. We want to be back in person as soon as it is safely possible. And we're figuring this virtual world out. Last March, Advanced Acting was in rehearsals for The Crucible. We spent all of April brainstorming what The Crucible could look like in 2020 and created a film called Rituals, which is on the Fala Upload and was featured on NPR. In Advanced Creative Writing, together we wrote a novel, Seven, on loneliness. Last semester in Intro to Acting, uh, students filled out a 10-page questionnaire and we compiled a performance called Humans Together. Advanced Acting did scenes from Angels in America. Advanced Musical Theater got to go to Mud Shark Studios and record songs for Next to Normal. This semester, Musical Theater is working on a beautiful production called Now Hear This. Advanced Acting is working on a wonderful show called Love and Information. And Intro to Acting are creating original work based on social justice issues that they're passionate about. So we are moving forward. We are working hard and having fun. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kim Katibi, and I'm the Special Education Director here at Flagstaff Arts and Leadership Academy. I wanted to take a few moments to share with you what I think is so extraordinary and special about FALA. Over the course of the late spring and into the summer, FALA faculty and staff came together trying to plan and figure out how best to support our students in this ever-changing educational environment. One of the words that resonated deeply with us was the word connection. When your student comes to FALA, they become part of our FALA family and immediately are immersed into this FALA community filled with dedicated, talented educators that invest their time and commit their resources to helping support students where they're at and build their own drive and passion and creativity in what they would like to pursue once they leave FALA and go out into the world. In the special education department this year, we continue to build on our connection with students as well as to try to build those connections with students that had joined us new to follow this year. We monitored and adjusted our services and supports. We reached out to our families and our students to let them know that we were here. Um, we came up with creative and flexible ways to help meet students' needs with what they were challenged with in the online environment. This year, I also had the honor of being able to support our counselors at FALA. This is a dedicated team of two school counselors and an intern that have worked hard to build social and emotional connections with students and help students be able to connect with each other and the greater FALA environment. They've done everything from play Jackbox games with students to hosting grade level social um, hours and trying to build those connections so students can be able to connect with their peers and their teachers. For our high school students, the counselors have continued to work hard to help them build on what comes next for them after FALA. They've continued to work on those opportunities that help students to pursue career and education once they graduate from FALA and to prepare for life next year. Hi, I'm Jessica. I'm a FALA parent. I currently have a junior at FALA and I also have a student who graduated last year from FALA. Um, something I think that's really unique about FALA is the way the teachers um, form connections with the students. They really get to know them and they really try to foster um, creativity and engagement with the students. So they will like focus in on what a student has interest in or maybe what a student is really good at or maybe some, some place where the student is trying to grow and they will help the student to have wonderful opportunities, not just at school, but also in the community. Um, whether that be like at STEM night, at the dome, or 
working with local nonprofits, local politicians, state politicians, going on amazing field trips, all kinds of wonderful opportunities for students to, to grow and learn both in the classroom and outside of the classroom. And that's all made possible because the teachers take, take a really personal interest in their students. And another thing that I really like about Fallout that I think is really unique is that um, the students are really encouraged to be their own unique self and follow their own best path. Um, so students can really pursue what it is they're interested in, whether that be all of the arts, um, one art in particular, um, particular kinds of academic paths, whether that be a college or anything else. Um, I think each student is really considered their own uh, unique person, and that's pretty unique about Fala. Uh, my student who graduated last year, she commented that at college she feels very, very prepared because she has had such an active role in her education, deciding um, where she wants to push herself, where she wants to just stay the course, um, learning how to schedule her own activities, how to get her own work done, all of that. She, she feels because she was so involved in all aspects of her own education, she was ready to just tackle college head on and she feels very prepared. So those are some things I love about Paula. Bye. Hello, this is Janice Hennis. I have been an art educator for over 20 years. I also coordinate the learning service program and a host of experiential learning trips to Mexico, Central America, New York City, and Chicago. What sets Fall apart from other schools is our learning service program. Collaborating with our community partners and connecting our students to local nonprofits, schools, and community organizations as we support the needs of our community through their arts and academic courses. What I love most about FALA are obviously our students. I continue to have a lasting relationship with our students beyond graduation. Our students are unique, creative, and compassionate and are going to be change makers. They're already change makers today. And my colleagues, they inspire me every day with their passion for education. Hi, I'm Heather Pierce. I'm a current parent of a sixth grader at FALA although I did serve on the board for three years, and so my experience goes quite a ways back. Um, since the uh, school has been doing virtual school, uh, my son started sixth grade, and so I've had an opportunity to really see how the school functions, both pre-COVID, during COVID, um, and really how nimble and flexible the school is. Uh, what I'm really impressed with is how quickly they've been able to pivot and really do a great job of supporting students um, in this virtual learning environment. I've also had the opportunity to see how the school functions, obviously in a pre-COVID environment. Um, and really what they do, so I think uniquely in comparison to other schools in the Flagstaff community and even beyond, um, is their ability to really support the whole student and to really um, understand what that student is particularly good at, interested in, et cetera, and find really creative ways and meaningful ways to um, to support the learning progress of that student, whether it be academic or performance, arts, music related. Um, you know, one thing that I think that um, has really impressed me about FALA is um, not just the community, which the community is really tight, and I think that's an important part of how FALA operates, but the, um, the academic aspect of teaching and learning at FALA is extremely impressive. Um, the teachers have just a really special way of taking real life scenarios and applying those to the learning process and uh, to content that's being um, that's being taught during um, the, the variety of classes. I've, I've been able to see it actually firsthand since my son's home um, and getting to peek in and, and see how that's done. Um, it's a really interesting way of learning and I think it's also a really, really solid way of um, making something memorable and making things kind of stick. enjoyed that um, video. I'm now going to introduce Doug Lyerly, who is one of our middle school 
social studies teachers and he and uh, one of our other middle school teachers and a few of our students are going to talk to you about what we've got going on here in middle school. So, middle school! Never gets old. Listen, hi. Hey guys. I just want to, uh, <laughs> I just want to tell you why uh, our middle school is better than all other middle schools on the entire planet. So, hold on to your hats. Okay. Um, listen. Some people have this philosophy, especially, I don't know, random acquaintances of mine that like, oh, middle school, oh no, oh no, middle school. Um, like, like middle schoolers are some mutants who have to get through this horrible time in their lives. And sometimes that is true. But in general, I would say that is not our attitude at all. I think that um, middle schoolers are wonderful and are superhuman in their combination of excitement for the world and um, curiosity. And um, this is how we approach it. We have three main principles. One is that we really take middle schoolers seriously as young adults who are change, change, aged, ah, change agents in the school um, and in the world. So um, we spend a lot of time talking about current events. Uh, and if they have a problem and something's making them mad, then we talk about how we can actually address it. And we take it straight to government officials. And we have a lively correspondence with government officials um, and sometimes they come and visit us because we write them so much. So the mayor came to visit sixth grade last year. Um, the uh, Congressman Tom O'Halloran will be visiting the eighth graders this year. I did not set up these visits. My students just pestered them to the point where they said it'll be faster if I just talk to you directly. Um, and that is really cool. Um, but we also take them seriously as as artists who have something potentially beautiful and unique and wonderful inside them that could come out through the process of some creative project that we do. And that's one of the beautiful things about this job is getting to be able to see them make those things all the time. Um, and then, and then they're, they see that there's something in them that they didn't know was in them. It's great. Um, but we also, and finally, number three, take them seriously as kids still kids and they need to have fun and they need to laugh and we laugh a lot and we're very silly and even though we're taking on the problems of the world and making all this beautiful art we spend a lot of time just joking around and, and incorporating games and i have fun every time i teach so um you know we are all trying to get through this difficult time in the world um middle school is already sometimes a difficult time to be alive um so we put a lot of emphasis on community and um, how we're all in it together and supporting each other. And we just have a wonderful community where I hope that you could send your kids and we could also help them and have a good time and make cool stuff. Cool. Christina Wolf, woo! Good evening. Uh, thank you all so much for joining us uh, tonight for this lovely event. Um, and I, I want to echo my excitement and enthusiasm about middle school. Um, I, I definitely came from a background of working with younger students um, for a number of years in my career. And when I got to FALA, this was really the first time um, that I got to experience the joy of what it is to work with 11 through 13 year olds. The high schoolers are great. And we're going to talk about how great high schoolers are a little bit later. Um, what I love about our middle school is um, the collaboration that happens within the team of teachers that I get to work with and, um, and just what amazing professionals they are. And I really saw people rise to the occasion, especially this year as we all pivoted online and no one really knew what they were doing. And we have, um, we have such a focus on where do we meet the kids? You know, and in August, um, we knew that we would meet them online <laughs> and we didn't know anything beyond that. And I think we learned pretty quickly that, you know, just because they were on our computer screens, um, they needed a lot more than that. And I watched the amazing professionals um, with whom I work respond um, so actively um, and passionately to the needs of our students. I think what makes us unique at FALA is we see humans and the humans are our number one priority. And our middle school is 
Um, actually, our school, I'm going to talk about all of Fala. Our school is a place of love and acceptance and, um, you know, a, a space that is safe for all. And we welcome everyone. And in this time that is a huge transition, which is middle school, um, I'm so grateful that we get to hold um, our students close to us and we kind of help them through um, what can be a really weird and awkward transition. Um, and what can also be extremely formational um, as they are discovering the humans that they're becoming. Um, so it, it's incredible and powerful. And um, actually, I think there's probably no one better to tell you about this than our other middle school students. So Mr. Lyerly, please introduce our other panelists. We've got Amelia Walls, woo! Um, so I love Fala because it has made me understand who I want to be. And they have also taught me to believe in myself um, and be the best person I can be for myself and others. Cool. And we've got Bryn. Bryn's in a car. Woo, Bryn. Yeah. Sorry if there's any background noise. <laughs> um, Anyways, I like Fala and I love how they teach us in a way to make the world a better place. Um, I like how everyone is accepted here at Fala and that everyone can be a leader. Um, some classes I've taken last year and this year is um, music, theater, engineering, and art, um, and some others. So I love Fala. Uh, Damien, go ahead. Cool beans, hello. I look pale, um, but I know, right? Um, basically, I chose Fala because there's no discrimination. None of that, nobody likes that. Uh, because when I was at other schools, I used to get bullied for who I was. But like here at Fala, I can literally be who I am and love the penguin population here. Like, come on, seriously. Cool. Uh, Annika, go ahead. Uh, hi, I'm a seventh grade student at Fala, and three reasons why I like Fala are because of the teachers, the arts, and lastly, the lab classes after school. Um, the teachers make sure you feel comfortable, and they will give you extra work to push yourself and excel. There's also many different creative classes to take, such as like tap and ceramics and theater. And the teachers will also work with the kids one-on-one -on -one to like help with assignments and homework. Okay, so thank you very much to the middle school team and our middle school students. There's a little bit about our middle school. We are going to shortly segue into high school, but first, first we have a video of one of our dance performances. This um, is a video that was choreographed by the dancers in it and is part of the social justice symposium that we've been putting on the last few weeks and we'll be putting on for another couple of months, really, actually probably to the end of the year, to talk about issues of social justice, education. This uh, video uh, was choreographed by the students for uh, inclusion in the Social Justice Symposium and is an example of what we do here as a combination, like I said, of both the dance classes and collaboration with other classes. i 
So, um, without further, we are now going to uh, have a couple of speakers from our high school academic side. Uh, so, I would like to introduce um, Ms. Allison Gruber, who is one of our English and creative writing teachers, and also Mr. Rich Kruger, one of our science teachers. So, uh, Allison and Rich, the uh, floor is yours. I don't want to follow Rich Kruger, so I will let Rich Kruger go after me. Is that cool, Rich? Yeah, go ahead, Allison. Okay, we, I, I know you're going to have something. I'm not the published author and here. Pyrotechnics and, Just yeah. <laughs> um, I'm Allison Gruber. I teach as Eli said English, uh, creative writing, and the AP Lit and Language courses here at Fala. This is my seventh year at Fala. Um, I love this school. I wish there was a school like this when I was a middle schooler and a teenager. And I love working with my kids. And I think, you know, one thing we can all agree upon, no matter where we're coming from, is that people want to feel like they've been seen and they've been heard. And all FALA students, I believe, feel seen and they feel heard. And that is an exceptional thing from my personal perspective for a school to pull off, but something I think we do well. On the academic side, this year has been challenging as it has been for many, many um, schools in the area. But let me just real quickly tell you about something I did in my AP class today as an example of the kinds of things we do at FALA. So my AP students, many of them are gonna take the AP exam. They want fours and fives, right? We have a pretty good track record at FALA in our humanities courses for high AP scores, so yay us. Um, but um, this year, you know, everything is a little bit different, a little bit more truncated. So we've been talking as a whole school about education, right? And like what the future of education looks like. So me and my kids, they're juniors and seniors. They don't like being called kids. They're not kids, they're teenagers, young people. We decided that for the vocab drill, which we always do in the second half for AP, because they've got to learn vocab, um, that I'm going to have them teach some of the words. And we're going to test to see how well different teaching methods work in the classroom based on a test score that they get after teaching each other the vocabulary words. So we're having two conversations simultaneously, one about what is testing measure and one about how do we learn vocabulary words for a test that you all have to take in a couple of months. And fall is always open to that kind of learning in the classroom where the, where the students have some input, where the students have, there's purpose behind what they're doing, even if they're doing it to get a score on a test. And that's really all I have to say. I'd be happy to take questions at the end of this evening, but I'm gonna hand it over to the fabulous Mr. Kruger. <laughs> Thanks, Austin. Uh, hey everyone, Rich Kruger here. I teach high school and middle school. I have a great pleasure to be able to work with sixth graders through 12th graders, and it's an honor to watch students uh, progress um, through those years. In high school, I teach astronomy. I have a bunch of telescopes. We're always going out to Buffalo Park and looking at the stars and such. In physics, we're always launching water balloons and things in the field and calculating velocities. And in engineering, we're building robots, we're building airplanes, we're building rockets, and building all sorts of things. But this year, we had the opportunity to do something completely different, which was actually really cool and something I've always wanted to do. So I'm gonna share my screen with you and show you some of the awesome things our engineering students have been pulling off here. Uh, let me just get my screen shared with y'all. Here it comes. Uh, maybe get screen sharing Abe enabled, maybe. Uh, um, there we go. All right. So, uh, first semester in engineering, we did programming. What kind of programming? We learned Python. And uh, here's an example of uh, one of the finals that my student just wrote on their own. They wrote an interactive 
gameplay called Dungeon March 2020, in which you enter in names, and now oh, these student really took and went off with this. This is great to see them extending the knowledge and the stuff that they learned. And now this second semester, we're in computer-aided drafting um, using an online platform called Onshape, and look at all the things the students have been making. And, and with cups and boons and spool, one student, they made a complete pair of ice skates, like totally went for um, the ice skates. Look at this, and this was like a week into the class and she was so psyched to be doing this. And then uh, I said, hey everyone, I showed up in R2D2, I said, hey, let you make you draw an R2D2. And man, look, they started drawing R2D2s for me and all sorts of stuff. Now, that's not it. They conceive of this stuff in their head, they draw it up and then guess what we do? <laughs> Check this out. Wow, right here, we have the school's 3D printer. And look, R2D2 has come to life. Here is a bowl and a spoon that a student built. Here is a, a print being made right now. One of our things was to build and draw uh, dice. Here is a, a, sh uh, a Shazam thing. Uh, young one, young lady was practicing printing out her name. And we have a glow in the dark Among Us character. So we are really strong in the arts, but we are also super strong in STEM uh, here at Fala. We have a Lego robotics team that uh, is for middle schoolers and uh, uh, have an excellent, excellent, excellent STEM department. So if you're looking for a balanced school, Fala is the place for you. Thank you. All righty. Thank you very much, Rich. Uh, and Allison, you don't know this, but I made that exact comment at the last one, like, oh, I get to follow Rich now. <laughs> so totally know what you mean, because, well, anyways, uh, Rich, just, I know somebody typed a question, asked what grade were the, or how old were the students that were doing some of the drafting stuff um, that you were showing? I have sixth graders, seventh graders, eighth graders, some ninth graders, a couple tenth graders, but mostly the ones that are doing awesome uh, are sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. Cool. Oh, yeah. Thank you. So I, I saw that question pop up. Just a couple, uh, one thing before we go on to the next, I wanted to, I was reminded this last time. Um, you should all know that Rich Kruger, it was la two years ago, was the Viola Award winner for the top science uh, educator in Flagstaff. And, and also one of our uh, teachers coming up uh, in the next segment, uh, Mike Levin was the top arts teacher a number of years ago. And Allison Gruber, who you just saw, was nominated, unfortunately did not win, with top arts educator also in Flagstaff a couple years ago. So we are quite active in the community and, and are recognized for some of that as well. So I just wanted to, to point that out. So thank you very much, uh, high school folks. We are going to now segue into the art section but first one of our a new video that we added for this event from uh, last week is a video put together by uh, Ms. Betsy Hamill who is one of our arts educators and we'll be speaking shortly and it is a um, compilation of some pieces of visual arts work that we uh, put together so that you could all see and is in fact scored by her son Takale who is a fall graduate and now uh, is in theater school in Los Angeles. <laughs> Thank you. 
thank you, Betsy, for putting that together and for all of our arts teachers for encouraging all the students to put together some of this amazing work. So uh, now we are going to segue right into the arts department. And I believe we have four of our arts educators here with us today. Um, Ewan Brousseau, who is in the visual arts department and also uh, Eric Walden and Mike Levin from theater and music and Betsy Hamill from music. My name is Ewan Brasso and I teach uh, visual art, film and photography for middle schoolers and high schoolers here at FALA. And um, as I was listening to my colleagues, I realized uh, that all of us are active in the subject we, subjects we teach. What I mean is like Mr. Levin, for example, is an accomplished actor. Um, Ms. Gruber is a working published author. Uh, Mr. Kruger has been in near earth orbit. Um, <clears throat> with the folks from NASA. Um, I'm personally a working artist and experimental filmmaker. Um, and we love our subjects because we live our subjects. And I think that's something really unique that I, that I never experienced uh, as a high schooler my, myself or middle schooler myself. I didn't really have that window into um, these professions like we do here at FALA. Um, the arts and uh, academics are integrated at FALA so that we can uh, bolster each other and, and not compromise on one or the other. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, and I'm really just, I just count myself as very privileged. Um, my relationship with FALA started in 2012 when I did my student teaching with Ms. Hennis. Um, I subbed around the district after that for a while, got some uh, good experiences, and then also worked at um, one of the other charters here in town for a couple of years. Um, and I have to say that uh, I would not uh, be the, the, uh, the teacher I am, the father I am, the person that I am without FALA. This has really been a, uh, a journey of self-discovery for me in just these five short years. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, the, I could go on about the diversity of classes we offer. Um, anywhere from middle school to high school, you have a, a broad range of art and film and photography experiences. Um, you could major in film, so to speak. Um, you could major in art, you could major in theater. All of these things um, work to support you in, in, in reaching your personal goals, your life goals, uh, and creating that, um, those habits of lifelong learning is really what we're focused on here at FALA. We're also focused on the physical nature of education, uh, that, that education is a physical experience. And that's another thing that I really uh, love and I'm completely devoted to when it comes to um, the visual arts, especially in filmmaking and photography. Um, <clears throat> these are uh, these adaptive experiences that we offer really change your brain physically and, uh, and make you more capable. Uh, and that's really our focus here um, on these physical elements. On the screen, you'll see there's uh, a list of classes coming up, not all inclusive. There are lots more than just on the list there um, that we're happy to uh, talk to you about if you want some more information to contact us after the, uh, the event. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your time. Uh, and thank you to Takale for, uh, for that awesome track on that video of our visual arts. I did not expect that. I was really pleasantly surprised, so thank you. My name is Betsy Hamill, and I'm a uh, music and dance teacher. I teach several music classes here, and I also teach a, a couple dance classes as well. Um, and, you know, the thing I want to basically touch upon is that FALA is a community. And this is what really what sets us apart. Um, we garner our strength, and we build our relationship with one united goal, and that's to educate and to connect. And I think, you know, we really have a unique approach um, in terms of our education model, where we have a steadfast worldview. Um, our music program is really an extension of this, and it's a one, one of a kind program in, in the United States. I have rarely found music programs at the middle school and high school level that mimic this, but we have um, a world music ensemble uh, where we learn the history of these traditional music practices. And uh, we also have a jazz band, a multi-level choral program, uh, instrumental band program, a guitar ensemble, and a multi-level piano program. Um, in addition to that, we also have a popular music class called Falunk, which is definitely on purpose. Uh, the Fala, it's the original Fala funk band, which shortened uh, becomes of Falunk. <laughs> um, in the last three years, we've had uh, six students get accepted at the most pre prestigious music schools in the country. Uh, six of them got accepted at the Berklee School of Music. Um, 
and uh, three of our students last year got accepted to University of the Arts. Uh, and just also last year, we had uh, three students accepted with a nearly full scholarship to the University of Arizona. Um, in talking about those students from last year, you know, we're all on pause. It's not pause, but we are <laughs> teaching the arts online. It's challenging, you know. And um, we had three students last year that, or actually two students that made it into and auditioned for and made it into the state jazz, uh, state jazz band ensemble. So for those of you that don't know what that is, uh, the state jazz band ensemble is a very rigorous and very competitive uh, ensemble. So you, they only choose a few students uh, from the state. And at Fala, which doesn't have the biggest, you know, uh, community, we're not a big school. We were the only school in Northern Arizona that had two students. And the two students that made it into that ensemble, one was the very best pianist, jazz pianist in the state. So he competed against every other jazz pianist in the state and he, you know, acquired that position. And then the other was our uh, alto or uh, tenor saxophone player who got uh, position number two. So it's incredible. Um, I, I feel like, you know, as an educator, I've done a lot of work with uh, musicians of all ages. I taught elementary band for 15 years and follow was the first place I felt like I was, a, that I found my place as a teacher because there's this understanding that we can teach, but we allow students this beautiful kind of synergy where it's like, just get out of the way and let them become their potential. So you give tools, but you don't teach too much if that makes any sense. And this is why students, they come through and I'll have students from seventh grade all the way through 12th grade that I can really kind of understand where they're at and meet them where they're at. And that's, that's the beauty of it. But I don't want to talk too much more. Um, I think we have another, uh, so my colleague Eric Walden is also going to talk about the music program and then we'll, we'll show a video of the World Music Ensemble. Great. Thank you, Betsy. I'm Eric Walden and I was a professional actor, singer, dancer in New York City for many years. And I get to come to FALA. I am allowed to work with our fabulous students on musical theater and choral music. And it is an absolute delight. Um, like Mr. Kruger, I do have the privilege of working with students in grades 6 through 12 in our programs. And they are enthusiastic and they're, they are passionate and they're curious and they want to get their hands on and their feet wet and get up and do it. And we do that every single day in, uh, in non-pandemic times, for example, our choral uh, ensembles perform in live concerts. The top group, Follow More, uh, has, goes to the NAU Jazz madrigal festival every year where we have gotten top ratings well this year what do you do in a pandemic and we're online well it has forced us to be even more creative it has forced us to engage more critical thinking skills and analysis on, on what we can do as ensembles in an online world and each of those choral ensembles have made videos this year which we've submitted to our um, social justice symposium and they've been accepted. In fact, the two fabulous students who just spoke to you earlier, Amelia and Bryn, are in those groups who are in those videos. They did an outstanding job. We are uh, pushing the envelope out of our comfort zone, uh, recording yourself to go into a virtual choir, and they are stepping up and getting the work done. This very day, our advanced musical theater class was filming some scenes and songs uh, from a musical theater. We had gone into a professional recording studio and laid down the soundtrack. And today we went and, and filmed them. The filming process, as I'm sure Mr. Brousseau would tell you, can be very tedious and exacting. Uh, it, is, it is not a fast instant gratification art form. And our students were passionate and engaged and focused and eager to do it again. This is why I love being at FALA and teaching at FALA. Fabulous students, fabulous community. We accept and celebrate our students for who they are. Thank you. So this video we're gonna show is actually uh, just a clip from the World Music Ensemble that we have. Um, and it's a Middle Eastern piece, a neo-traditional piece by this group called Pod for Pod. I will put that in the chat. So if you want to look up that song later, you can, and then support that artist. It's all about supporting the artists. 
So this is our World Music Ensemble performing last year uh, before we uh, went into lockdown. segue into Ms. Uh, Janine Richard, one of our school counselors, who will talk a little bit about counseling and then we will continue to move on. So thank you uh, all our arts teachers and for some of the, those videos and Janine, go ahead. Hi everyone, I'm Janine, one of the school counselors here at FALA, the other one who's not here today. She was at the last of Virtual Taste of FALA is Melissa Burstein. We split our uh, students through alphabet. So I have the last names A through H-E, and she has the last names Hi through Z. And we serve all students, so sixth through 12th grade. It's amazing getting to work with all of them. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about what we do in the school counseling department. 
So this year has been extraordinary and we've been doing different interventions in place to address uh, different needs. One of those things is every week on Thursdays, we do what we call high school hangouts and middle school mixers. So we literally just hang out with students to give them a place to meet their peers and just interact in a non-academic setting. It's a lot of fun. Uh, middle schoolers love Among Us right now, so that's pretty much all we do. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Um, we also, we're, uh, Fala Update is a newsletter at Fala. It goes out, I believe, once a week. And, no, not once a week. It, it's a newsletter, and we have a piece in there, Counseling Connection. And so there we include tips and trips, tips and tricks for improving student success and wellness. We give opportunities there to supplement education. Like, for example, there's a D.C. summer trip coming up for Latinx students. And then there's a John Hopkins Global Health Leader Conference. So that's where your students can get uh, not just school updates, but school counseling updates. We also have uh, launched a peer mentor program this year where we have trained follow up students to mentor their peers in, real, in organization, how to succeed, creating routine. That's been a really successful program. I'm glad we launched that and I'm excited to see it continue. We've done, uh, we have a peer mediation program where instead of mentoring students with organization, we're mentoring students to help each other in conflict. So that's been a successful program in the past. And then we do ECAP, which stands for Education Career Action Planning. So we are um, working with sixth through 12th grade students to help them plan for life after high school, whether that's going straight to a career, looking into a certification program, or going to college or university. Um, we do two lessons a year for each grade level in high school in, in middle school we only do one lesson a year so far and then we have recently been coordinating a suicide awareness and prevention workshop in addition to a bullying and harassment workshop for middle schoolers and melissa and i plan to do that for high schoolers as well uh, we've collaborated with outside agencies like uh, NEU's Clinical Mental Health Counseling Program, um, NEU Social Work Program, AmeriCorps. So we like to collaborate with community members to help supplement our support for students. We do regular check-ins for students, whether that is like an immediate, hey, I'm struggling, can we meet right now, or an ongoing appointment. I mean, every student has different needs, and we have the privilege of having a small school so we can reach a lot of students on a personal level. Um, and then we have, we facilitate mindfulness and meditation club. One of our sixth graders wanted to run the club this year. So we supported her in that and helped her get started. And so far she's had ongoing students showing up, a small group of middle schoolers. So that's been really exciting to have students ask to lead an initiative and we help them facilitate that. And then, so that's pretty much what we, yeah, the, a, a little taste of the school counseling program at FALA. I'm gonna link a few things in the chat. So I'm also 504 coordinator uh, for students who have disabilities. And I'm also the dual enrollment coordinator for students who have an opportunity, high schoolers can get a college credit while they're at FALA. So I will be linking those two resources in the chat and I'll also be linking FALA's graduation requirements. They're a little bit, um, it's a little bit more than your standard high school, but like, like you've seen a theme we're really into leadership service learning and a rigorous program in a way that supports all students so yeah that's about it for me for the school counseling department but i'll link those while while the next person is up oh the next person that's up is our wonderful and amazing miss kim kativi she's uh Fala's special education director so take it over miss kativi Awesome. Thank you, Janine, for that intro. I hope you're enjoying getting to know a little more about who we are and why we feel so lucky to be able to do what we do. Watching those videos really makes me hopeful for the future and the time when we can all be together on campus again. It's amazing to hear and see students create music, sing, dance, and work on their art throughout the school day. I often find myself walking around campus and seeing all of this happen in real time, and I hope that you get the opportunity to do the same soon. At Fall, I serve as a special education director. I've been in this field for approximately 15 years, working with and on behalf of students with disabilities, both at the K-12 level and higher ed. One of the things I love about Fall, and I think is really unique, is how we serve and support our students with disabilities. We strive to create an educational experience where students are part of the learning community. 
We work hard to ensure that we are responsive to where individual students are at and help prepare them for what comes next. In the special education department, I get to work with a team of dedicated professionals, which range from special education teachers, case managers, paraeducators, and related service providers. As you may know, special education services are based on an individualized education plan or an IEP. We work really hard to build relationships with our students and their parents so that when we come together as a team, all voices are honored and valued in creating IEPs that meet the needs of our students. At FALA, you will find that our special education services are delivered in the least restrictive environment, and thus this depends upon the student's individual needs. We strive to partner with our general education teachers to provide services and support in an inclusive setting as much as possible. We also have classes that serve students with IEPs in a smaller environment, and this allows us to create programmings that are geared to meet the unique needs of each student. Over the years, we've seen our students with disabilities successfully transition into higher education, career, and beyond. Last week, we had two former students who are now attending U of A present at our social justice symposium and share that they're both thriving in the higher education environment and have been meeting the expectations of their programs while balancing the unique learning needs related to having a specific learning disability. These are the type of success stories that are common at FALA and why we do the work that we do. If you have any questions about special education programs and services at FALA, please feel free to reach out to me. I would be happy to answer any questions and tell you more about what we do. Uh, so just a few things here. I've put together a slide of other stuff that we kind of didn't cover anywhere else. Um, Ms. Burchard already covered graduation requirements. She sent that out basically. Sorry, I guess I'm, I'll just go in order. AB days, as opposed to um, uh, another, other schools where you would have uh, classes every day, the way follow works is we have a, a block schedule. And what that means is Mondays and Wednesdays are what's known as A days, and Tuesdays and Thursdays are B days, and Fridays alternate between A and B days. Um, sorry, I, I saw a chat that said, yes, attendees do have access to the Q&A, so uh, you should be able to ask questions later. Um, so what that means is instead, so you take eight classes at FALA, so you have four classes on Mondays, Wednesdays, and some Fridays, and uh, the other four classes on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and again, some of those Fridays. And the idea is that these are longer classes, so that gives you more time to dig deeply into, certainly with some of the arts classes, you spend a lot more time warming up and cooling down and rehearsing. So that, that gives an opportunity to, to go into things in depth versus having the same classes uh, every day. Uh, the rest of this uh, under academics, the how to pick classes, graduation requirements, DE, I think a lot of that was covered by Ms. Burchard. She sent out some of that stuff. Uh, as uh, Ms. Gruber had mentioned, we have a fair number of AP classes, which stands for advanced placement. This is all relevant to high school. Um, we have uh, language and literature, uh, a couple science classes, theater classes, ceramics class, uh, French, Spanish. I know, I know those are the D ones, I apologize. But we do have an entire list. And again, all that can be got through uh, the counseling department. Um, on a community perspective, we have a number of clubs that we have uh, both during the day and after school. And they range from um, things, for example, Ms. Katibi runs the Indigenous Youth Club. Um, we have a, an environmental coalition, both a, now a high school and a middle school environmental coalition. And that club uh, this year um, put together and had ratified by our board a fall climate action plan, which is very much in line with the city climate action plan. And so we're working to um, make changes on campus and in the community. Uh, there are a number of other clubs, for example, speech and debate. There is a literature club. Um, there are some gaming clubs. So there's a variety of clubs that are sort of um, both educational and service learning. So, um, which takes me into the service learning side of things. One of the things I think I mentioned uh, earlier was that we have a requirement of 30 hours per year in high school of community service and service learning. And we incorporate that, you can do that sometimes within classes. So some classes will, well, all classes are supposed to have a service learning component. And the idea is that within the class, there will be projects that you will work on and they will go out into the community. I am now going to introduce 
Sarah Coppola, who is our registrar, who is going to talk about, now you're ready to enroll. So, Sarah. Thanks, Eli. Hey. Sure. Hello, all future fall alamas. We're glad you're here with us today. Um, to clarify, we don't have a nurse, but we do have the amazing Miss Tulsi, who is happy to keep kids comfortable while they're, you know, if they come to school and then they get sick at school, she'll she'll make them comfortable and and um, we just, you know, and we're trained in first aid, obviously. So um, one of the biggest things about not having a nurse is you do need to be prepared to come get your kiddo. But Miss Tulsi's going to make them as comfortable as possible until until you can do that. So uh, my name is Sarah and I'm the registrar at FALA and even your office staff is coming at you from a place of love. Um, my own daughter went to FALA, she found FALA as a junior, um, so she didn't start high school there. She was not unhappy at the school she'd been at, but she was definitely, um, when she went to FALA, she just changed. She started, she went from existing to thriving, which is just huge in a parent. Um, Miss Tulsi, who is your front desk manager, also has three students, um, three amazing boys that go to FALA. Um, and it, it, this is because we love FALA, not, not just because it's not just a school to us. We really do feel it. Um, so advice from a registrar, there is no bad school in Flagstaff, only the right school for your student. So as you're looking through the schools, um, you know, make sure you're, you're paying attention to what your student needs out of a school. But if we are the right one for you, um, the basic procedures to, to get started are to fill out the short application that's on flagouch.com. Uh, for all of you, I know many of you I see in that list have already filled out that application and thank you. There is nothing else you need to do. You are all set to be included in the lottery. If you haven't filled it out and you have been impressed with what you see here tonight and want to um, go to flagarts.com under the enrollment tab, make sure you pick next school year and it's a short application. Um, I'm gonna be one of your first points of contact but either me or Ms. Tulsi in the front office are happy to answer any questions. Unfortunately, the office is mostly closed right now because of COVID, but we're available by email. And uh, my email is S-K-A-U-P-P-I-L-A at flagarts.com. Or you can call the front office, um, leave a message, and either myself or Ms. Tulsi will get back to you. So thank you very much, and if you have any questions, you just let me know, okay?